going, going on with our series called Sermon on the Mount, which is an amazing sermon that Jesus speaks to his followers and he gets a huge crowd that gathers. And we've been talking about it. Pastor Rich did a great job last week talking about anger, so I don't have to get angry today, which I really appreciate. Pastor Rich, wherever you are, thank you that I don't have to get angry. But today, we're going to be talking about something else. <sighs> Can I confess with you one of my childhood fears? When I was a little boy growing up in Yonkers, New York, Yonkers, I was going bonkers in Yonkers. Uh, my brother David, God bless his heart, in the South that means he's being a jerk, used to scare me. There was this thing on WPIX, Channel 11. It was called Chiller. And they would show these B-rated horror flicks. And they had this intro, Chiller. They played it backwards. Ralph, you know what I'm talking about. It scared the Beetlejuice out of me. I, I don't even know what that is. I made it up. It scared me crazy. I had, literally, I had nightmares for week and weeks. My brother would grab me when it came on and throw me in the room and make my eyes to be open. He was horrible. Would you please pray for me? <laughs> it, I, I, I'm not kidding you. I had so many nightmares. And to make matters worse, it has six fingers. It was horrible. Even to this day, I, can I be honest with you? I still get a little freaked out about that. So pray for me. So it scared me. It was about the hand. Well, the Bible has something to say about the hand, too. It says that we should really care what our hand is doing. The Bible says, and this is Jesus speaking here, if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away, for it's better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. So I've asked the ushers to hand out the machetes and the tourniquets. We're going to have a little amputation ceremony today. Aren't you glad you came to church? What on earth is that all about? Well, I have news for you. It actually would be better if we lost a limb than to be separated from God forever. But that's not what Jesus is talking about. In fact, another scripture says this in the same passage of scripture. says this, if your right eye causes you to sin... Tear it out and throw it away, for it's better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. So we also have eye patches this morning and spoons to help you out. Now, if you're completely grossed out, that's why Jesus said it. It was an extreme hyperbole. I can't say the word hyperbole. I said it in last service, right? Hyperbole. Thank you so much. I didn't want to speak in tongues without an interpretation. Hyperbole. So that's what he said to get our attention. Unfortunately, people have taken this verse literally. There's been monks that have castrated themselves because they could not control their lust. In fact, I was uh, reading a couple of weeks ago a sermon by Chuck Smith, who is the founder of Calvary Chapel in New York. I'm New York, in California. He's now with the Lord. He tells us a story of going to a person's house where the son used a uh, table saw to cut off his hand because he read the scripture. Now, that's not what we're talking about here. And that's what legalism will do. Legalism without the love of Christ makes scriptures dangerous. Jesus, church without Jesus is horrific. So Jesus was not literally talking about cutting your hand off or plucking your eye out, but he's using very vivid language to explain what that's about. Now, we talked about this. Now, what I really need to do is, uh, my, my friend Pastor David shared about Scripture, but I want to go back for a few moments because the, basically this entire section is predicated upon this. Jesus is bringing fulfillment to the law. This is what he says. Do not think that I have come to destroy the law of the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. There is a movement within the body of Christ in the modern church today, within the Bible-believing church today. We're being told by national leaders that we need to unhitch the Old Testament from the New Testament. And what I say about that, that's heresy. It's wrong. I love the people that say it, but I hate what they're saying. It's wrong. Nowhere in the Bible does it ever say that. In fact... Do you know what the Bible of the New Testament church was? The Old Testament. 
do you realize that there were letters circulating by the Apostle Paul that was called Scripture, and there were things coming up, and it became Scripture for sure, but the Bible of the New Testament church was the Old Testament. So if anyone says you need to unhitch the Old Testament from the New Testament, get out of that church immediately. Leave that church. Have nothing to do with a church that dilutes the Word of God. Let me say it again. Anybody that says that, it's heretical. And I, I'm very concerned that major evangelical leaders, I hate the word evangelical, now it means a voting block, Bible claim Bible-believing people are going down the road of compromise, and it's not the way it's called to be. Jesus makes it very clear here. Now, I want you to, I want you to track with me here, okay, just for a few minutes. Do not think I came to destroy the law of the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Well, Jesus fulfills it all, therefore we cut out the old. No. For surely I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away. Have heaven and earth passed away? No. For surely I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one little, let me see, one jot or one little, oh, I'm sorry, one jot or one tittle. By the way, you get a little older, sometimes you can't see very well, okay? One jot or one little tittle will not by no means pass from the law till it's fulfilled. Now, what's a tittle? Okay, a tittle is a punctuation on the Hebrew language. Not one period, not one punctuation will pass away until it's fulfilled. That's what Jesus is saying. Now, I'm sorry, but I believe, I'm actually, I'm not sorry. I believe Jesus more than some hip, cool Christian leader. Sorry. I'm not sorry, actually. I gotta stop saying I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I, I am, I rather believe God in Jesus, right? So, Matthew 5, go on. Whoever therefore, check this out, whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments, and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teach, notice, does, in other words, you do what it says, does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So you can all be great. How does that sound? Instead of comparing yourself to other people, do what God's called you to do in faith, in love, in relationship, and we can all be great. Stop trying to compete against each other, and let's start completing each other, and we'll be something amazing. So, Jesus goes on. For I say to you, that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. What? Okay, uh, I don't think we understand what this means in that day. You know what it meant? The Pharisees were the conservative church of their day. The Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection. That's why you're sad, you see. So there were the two people that, that were involved, two groups of people that were involved in, the, in this. And what they used to do, by the way, if you were a Pharisee or Sadducee, you had to memorize. If you take your Bible, most of us don't bring our Bibles anymore. We have electronic devices. But if you take your Bible, um, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, the first five books of the Old Testament, they were required to memorize. Okay? Not only that. But they also had 611 additional laws they had to memorize. So, for example, it says you shall not work on the Sabbath. Then they made extra laws. They said you could not have more than a certain amount of steps in a day. So what they did is what you and I do today. We take, we take the Bible and we try to find loopholes. It's like going to a tax attorney and trying to find ways not to pay tax. Let me put my money in a Swiss bank account. Let me put it in the Cayman Islands. So I, I didn't have sex with that woman. In fact, I remember being in Bible college, being in Christian college, and I used to hear the guys get together in the dorm rooms, and they talk about how they're not going to have sex with their, their girlfriends, but they're going to do everything but the action. So it's not sex. I didn't do it. According to the Bible, it says sex. And then little did I realize the word sex means pornea, which means all sexual sin. But we try to find a way. In fact, when I heard our president say it back in the 90s, I swore that President Clinton went to Bible college. <laughs> because he sounded just like some of my friends. Of course, I was above the fray. I always am. You know that. So, and so what they'll do is they'll find a way to get around it. 
And that's what they did. And the Pharisees and Sadducees were all about the law. Not all of them, but many of them were. And they would put these restrictions on Jesus is saying this. He's like, what's the sense? I can't do this. I feel powerless. Fantastic. That's the first place you and I need to be to become free. That's what they teach you in the 12-step program. You are powerless. Now, there's three types of law in the Old Testament. I need to go here again because I hear it all the time. Well, the Bible says you're not supposed to mix two types of yarn. Therefore, same-sex marriage is okay. Therefore, it's okay to do this and the other because the Bible says that. Well, let me explain to you what the Bible talks about different types of law so we understand these things, okay? Here it is. There's three types of law in the Old Testament. First one is ceremonial law. Ceremonial law is how to have church, how to cut the animal up. Do not boil its calf in its mother's milk. Now, if anyone has done that, it's okay. But back in that day, it was a problem how to set up the tabernacle, how to set up the temple. These were all foreshadowing pictures of what Jesus was going to be. They were object lessons and spoke theologically what was going on. Okay, so all these ceremonial laws we're not required to do today. We don't have to wash our hands, though you better, you'll get sick. Okay, these are not required. In the New Testament, said we don't have to do these ceremonial laws anymore. Okay, second part of law was this, the civil law. The civil law was the law of the land. They were a theocracy where it was God and the people. Remember, the, the Jewish people were in captivity and slavery for four, over 430 years. Our country is 240 years old. That's a long time to be in slavery. So they had a slavery mentality. They took them out of the uh, Egypt. They had to learn how to be a people. So God gave them very strict rules in the wilderness. And they had all these types of rules, and they were, they were made for that people and that time group. We're not, we're not bound by these civil laws. There are laws for that land, like how fast to go on the road with your donkey. Okay? For example, we have civil laws here that you don't have to, like in England, for example, you can drive on the other side of the street. However, you do that here, you get yourself into trouble. Uh, I almost got hit by a car in England because I wasn't used to it. Very scary. But anyhow, that's another time. So then, number three, we have ceremonial law. You can understand? Religious laws. We have the civil law, the government of that time, a nomadic tribe uh, literally 3,000 3, years ago. They were just getting out of slavery. Okay? Let me just take another moment and mention this. There's been times where the United States of America has tried to bring democracy to a country that doesn't work. Countries like Haiti, and even the former Soviet Union, they tried to do it. It didn't work because people were not ready for that yet. You see, every society is a little different. So we have moral law, which never changes. You have some ceremonial law, changes. We're not bound by that anymore, which has been fulfilled in Christ. We're not bound by civil law that's been fulfilled in Christ. However, we are bound by moral law. And by the way, moral law is the Ten Commandments, all of them. We are bound by today because the, even the day of the Sabbath, which we'll talk about another time, you break God's laws, they break you. So what happens is this. Jesus fulfills the laws, not goes against them. So God's created order still is order. When we have people in our culture today trying to redo what God has placed in, it's to our own peril. So moral law does not change. So if someone comes to you and tells you that, you need to memorize that, seriously. Because a lot of people would say, well, the Bible says that. No, they don't understand what they're talking about. And for another thing about the Bible, the Bible is a library of 66 books. But that's another time for another season. You can go to our website and check up past, uh, I did a series called It's Written, where we talked about what the Bible is and what the Bible is not. My friends, it's what we can stand upon. And I'm, I'm taking a little extra time than I probably shouldn't have, but I just believe I need to do that for this service. So that's kind of what's going on with that. Now. Jesus comes, and what he does is he fulfills what the Old Testament says, and he does this as well. There's about seven statements of this. He says this, you have heard that it was said. You have heard that it was said. Notice, he says, you have heard that it was said. This is the teaching of the religious leaders. It was not necessary from Scripture. You see, there's something I found out the last couple of weeks from my research. This is why I love doing what I'm doing. I get to learn new things all the time. I found out that when the, when the um, Jewish people were taken into captivity by the Babylonians and then the Syrians later on, they were taken out of their country, they stopped speaking Hebrew, and they learned Aramaic. I did not know that. And by the time of Jesus, the common people, most of them spoke 
Aramaic, and some Greek. Very few people spoke Hebrew, except for the learned, except for the Pharisees. And so what happened was, in order to read the Bible in that day, you had the Septuagint, which is in Greek, but you had to go to the rabbi who could read it in the original language and tell it to you. The same thing that happened in the Christian church, where it was written in Latin. You don't understand what they're talking about, so the priest would tell you what it meant. Anytime you keep the Word of God from the people is when people fall astray. And so Jesus was saying, hey, listen, everybody. You've heard it said, but I'm going to tell you what it really says. And he goes on. So, you've heard it said, it was said to those of old, you shall not murder. We talked about last week. And whoever murders will be dangerous of the judgment. We talked about that last week. This week, you, and we're going to read it, we'll go by it, okay? You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right, eye, if your right hand causes you to sin, you understand the right hand is the hand of honor. The left hand is the hand you don't want to use. Just... If you ever go to the Middle East, do not shake your hand. Do not use your left hand to shake someone's hand because this represents Charmin. That's all I have to say. Okay. I'm not making this up. Okay. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you, for it's more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. I thought Jesus was a nice guy. Why is he talking about hell? Jesus talks more about hell than he does heaven because that's why he came. He does not want to see us to be in a place called hell. Okay, this is not fire and brimstone. This is the word of God. Now, plucking out eyes and cutting off hands or hell. We've made a bunch of T-shirts we want you to wear. <laughs> What's the deal with that? Well, let's look into it. Okay, let's go back now. We're going to look at the scriptures. We're going to look at some ways you and I can get free. You have heard it said. Of those are old, you shall not commit adultery, but I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery. What? If we just look at a woman, we're all done now. I mean, we're not supposed to, do, if I look at somebody, no, look at a woman to lust for her has already. In other words, it's not talking about looking, whoa, okay. I'm talking about looking at somebody and then beginning to visualize, to meditate, and then you can't stop, uh, as I, I've used this quote so many times because Martin Luther, the church reformer in the 1500s, said the following. He said, I cannot stop a bird from flying over my head, but I can stop it from making a nest in my hair. The good news is birds have a hard time making a nest in my hair because I have barely any left. <laughs> but nevertheless, what that's all about is it's not, all, it's not a bad thing to look Okay, and acknowledge something, but when you look a second or third or fourth look, I can't believe they're doing that, right? So that you, whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Well, since I've already lusted, I might as well sleep with him or her. That's not what the Bible is saying. Well, does it say it right there? So I looked already. I'm a, no, that's not what the Bible is saying. The sin aspect is already there. The collateral damage, however, is quite different. Once you actually do the different actions, now the collateral damage of that person and all the other things happen, but Jesus goes to the very heart. Why? He's getting rid of the legal loopholes that the Pharisees and Sadducees and <clears throat> the American Christian Church does today. Well, it's not really sin because I did not do that. Uh, do you forgive them? Oh, I forgive them, but I don't forget. You find little loopholes. He says, uh-uh, that ain't going to work. It's all about the heart. It all starts here. It goes from here to here and then here. If you take care of it here, it will not happen here. So Jesus goes about that, and he goes on. Now, this represents a, an, a, an iceberg. Lust is something that happens before the top of the iceberg comes to be seen. So this will lead to shipwrecking your life. My friends, I've seen it so many times. 
I don't care. I, no, every denomination, people that are, are believers are not believers, politicians to pig farmers. I mean, everyone's falling into sin. Why? Because this affects us all. We, Jesus tells us a way out of it. You don't have to. You don't have to listen to your sinful nature. You are not a victim. You see, our culture tells us you can't help it. That's the way you are. If I did everything I was told to be doing, I'd be in maximum security right now with three life sentences. You don't do what you feel. If you did what you feel, none of us would be here today. We have made emotions in what I, my design. Your design is we're all sin and fallen short of the glory of God. There's not one that's righteous. No, not one. We're all a wreck. So do not do what your sinful nature says. So lust is like this iceberg or anger or whatever it could be. He goes on, if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. It's more profitable for you that one of your members go into, instead of going to hell, he talks about your hand as well, cutting it off. So, Sin is a fatal disease. I know I've mentioned this before, but this is really real for me. That's why I'm mentioning it. A number of years ago, I, they found melanoma on my back. I was on vacation in the Florida land. And uh, I get a call from my doctor. He had, had no bedside matter at all. Uh, we, found, we found melanoma on your back. What's that? A cancer that can kill you. <laughs> Trying to eat a burrito, hearing that. <laughs> I had indigestion. <laughs> what? Yeah, we found melanoma on your back. We're going to have to cut it out or you could die. Oh, thanks a lot, doctor. I mean, basically, it was a little more, a little bedside, better bedside manner, but not really. His name, I'm not going to mention his name because I don't want you looking him up. Anyhow, so uh, I was freaking out, and I had to go back home and all that, and then he had to cut it out. He says, if we don't get this, it could kill you. However, if we get that it's topical, you'll be fine. No chemo, no radiation, nothing. So I go for skin scans every six months, and I get a scan every day for my wife. So anyhow, um, so this is what happened. And I'm um, glad she's not here. Okay. And that's what happened. So, so if I did not deal with that sin and deal with that disease, that disease could kill me. If you do not deal with sin, it will kill you. It is lethal in every capacity. For, Romans says this, for if you live by its dictates, in other words, if you live by, I just do what I feel. I feel, this is what I am, it's my identity. Yeah, I'm a, you know what I am? You know what my identity is? I'm a liar, I'm a thief. You tell you what I am? I'm a murderer, I'm an adulterer. I, I'm all these things. If I, my identity, if, if every propensity and thought and action I did, and, and if I listen to the quote-unquote, uh, the wisdom of this age, do what your body tells you. Really? You will be, you know, it doesn't work that way, everybody. See, for if you live by its dictates, you will what? Die. But if through the power of your hard work, no, by the power of the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. My friends, you have to cut out the sin like that surgeon cut out my cancer or it will kill you. Okay, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So the Holy Spirit gives us power beyond ourselves. You are not a victim. A victim mentality is, I'm going to say it, a victim mentality is a loser mentality. Let me say it again. A victim mentality is a loser mentality. You are not losers. You are winners in Christ Jesus. The Bible says that we're more than victors in Christ Jesus. You're not a loser. However, if you're a victim, you're a loser. I'm not a victim. I'm a victor. Yeah, I struggle, but my, not by might, not by power, but by thy spirit. Stop making excuses. Excuses don't work. Find solutions through Jesus Christ. Listen, this is for everybody. I know this is not a very popular type of teaching, but I really don't care. Because the word of God's around forever, people's opinions in society. By the way, the United States will be dust one day, just like Rome was, just like ancient Greece was, okay, like the Babylonians were. So guess what? The word of God's forever. So we need to stop listening to nonsense and live on the word of God. 
You're being arrogant. I'm not being arrogant. That's the word of God says. I trust the word of God over what I see and feel and think. All right? The spirit that you put to death, the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. For all who are led by the spirit, these are children of God. Now, how do you get free? I'm so glad you asked. How do you get free? Own your sin and cut it away daily. Until you take responsibility that you're the problem, no one can help you. Stop blaming your parents. Stop blaming your spouse. Stop blaming your brother or sister. Stop blaming uh, everyone else. Okay? You even blame the asphalt. It's a joke. Okay. Own your sin and cut it away daily. You can't get rid of something until you own it. Own it. I was wrong. You want to you completely blow away your spouse? When's the last time you told your spouse, for those that are married, I was wrong? Some of you, you said to your spouse, your spouse would pass out. We have to call the paramedics. When's the last time you ever said, I am wrong? If you feel an elbow in your ribs right now, you got issues that require tissues. Okay, so own your sin. I was wrong. I looked. I did. And cut it away daily. Every day you have to have a surgical procedure. If we confess our sins, not hide them, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Hello. Own it. I've sinned. You must confess it. So own your sin and cut it away daily. Live accountable and transparently. Okay, let me give you an example. About three or four weeks ago, I was reading about the metaverse and, you know, this takeover and Facebook and all this other stuff and talking about how we're going to be doing all these things visually and this and the other, reading about the great things that you can do. You can practice surgery with the glasses on. I'd rather have a real surgeon practice on a real person before they get to me. Thank you. But that's beside the point. So they're talking about all this, and then I started reading, well, by the way, they're going to have these types of things for, that, you know, for intimacy as well. I'm like, what? And so I was reading an article in one of these, mag not magazines, but one of these articles in these news publications, and then I clicked on a link, and it brought me to some place I did not want to be. Okay? Showed me some image. I, oh, crap. And I was like, <laughs> this is just, I'm just telling you what happened. Okay? So immediately I turned it off, and I said, whoops. And I texted my wife, and I called Sandra immediately and said, Honey, I, I, I probably shouldn't have gone that far looking to their article. There's no reason for me to do that. I w but I saw something I shouldn't have seen. Honey, I saw this pornographic image. I was wrong. And I wanted to tell you. I told her immediately. I didn't wait more than a minute before I texted her and told her. Why? Because if I would have waited, you can't tell your wife that. You're going to think that you've got a problem with pornography. You don't have a problem with pornography, so don't worry about it. Just let it go. And the next time I click again, well, I just want to read this article. And then I go down the slippery slope. I don't screw around with sexual sin. Because sexual sin will kill you, destroy your family, destroy your church. I'm tired of all the collateral damage I am seeing in the body of Christ and politicians and everyone else. I'm not better than anyone else. I tell you what, I need to take it seriously, and so do you. Don't play with fire or you will get burned. So... If you don't have that kind of relationship with your wife, then you need to work to that. If someone gives you a compliment at work and you're, oh, 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 I'm so in love. You never felt that way for your husband. I never felt that way for my husband. You married the wrong person. I married the wrong person. Baloney. Okay? It's just emotions. You need to tell somebody. If you can't tell your spouse, tell somebody. Listen, what you're only as healthy as your secrets, everybody. Why am I telling you this for? Because I'm telling you, I want to be free, and I'm not going to screw around with sexual sin. Neither should you, okay? Own your sin. Live accountable and transparently. Listen, everybody, if you can't handle this, uh, I think 12 hours a day, the average adult is 9 hours, teenagers are 14 to 15 hours a day. We're on these devices, okay? And you need to flip off your phone. Maybe you need a flip phone. Make your smartphone dumb. 
get rid of stuff and give the passcode to somebody else. Oh, I can't, I'll just TikTok. Yeah, TikTok is unbelievable, right? I got rid of TikTok. I don't need TikTok. I don't need to hear about particular families out there and what they're wearing and this and the other to weaken my mind. I don't need that CRAP. Neither do you, right? Looking at this constantly, constantly. Look what they, I mean, there's the other pastors that are out there. This guy, this one pastor, a friend of mine, he's got like, he's so buff. He's got this tight T-shirt out. He's, he's going like this. I'm like, I don't look like that. I'm like, forget it. I'm not going to look at that. I, I want my, you know, I got my bad bod, which I'm very proud of. Thank you. <laughs> I don't need a V bod. I mean, I'm just joking, but, you know, you start getting jealous of other people. It's not worth it. Get rid of this thing. If you can't control it, get rid of it. This is not evil. The problem is this, your heart. And so why feed something that's going to be bad? So, you know, does your spouse have your pass passwords? Do your friends have your passwords? Does someone that's spiritual have your passwords? Can they look at your social media? Can they look at your search history? You better. Men, listen to me. You need to do what I did. Because, by the way, pornographic images are going to come. No matter what you do, they're going to pop up somehow, some way. They have ways of doing it. So immediately, tell your spouse or tell your buddy, immediately, don't wait. Listen to me. I'm tell this might save your life. This might save your family. This might save your grandkids. I'm not playing. This stuff will kill you. This stuff will kill Listen, I've seen too many people die from this. It's not worth it. Immediately. Tell somebody if you fall. Okay, I'm running out of time here. We're almost done. We're coming in for a landing. Live accountable and transparently. You don't tell everybody, but you find people that are responsible that will tell you the right thing, not what you want to hear. Also, therefore, confess your sins to God alone and pray to God alone that you may be healed. Hello, if I cut my arm, which I'm not going to do from that scripture, what happens is my mind tells me, oh, there's a cut on your arm. So the mind tells the body, the body, then the limbs bring healing to it. So there's the head, but without the rest of the body, the hand does not get healed. I'm telling you right now, the reason why some of you are still bound in sin is because you've not confessed your sins to one another. Jesus sent his disciples two by two, not one by one. Hello, one can chase a thousand, two ten thousand. A three quarter is not easily broken. There is something in numbers. This is why uh, you never seen an army online. We need each other. The reason you can't get over your sin is because you're doing it all by yourself. You're not that great and neither am I. We need each other. Jesus said we need each other. Hello, are you better than Jesus? Confess your sins to one another. And then what? Pray for one another that you may be healed. Maybe that drug addiction can be healed if you confess it. Maybe that homosexual tendency can be healed if you get rid of it. Maybe that pornographic situation could be healed. Maybe that person at the office who you are, listen, if you're in an office with someone that you're attracted to, quit your job. It's not worth it. Quit the gym. Quit the church. Go to another church if you're, I'm serious. For a pastor to say that, that means something. I'm dead serious because you could be dead from it. Do not, you can ruin your legacy, ruin your family, ruin your grandchildren. It's not worth it. Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. We have to get rid of this lone ranger. It's just me and God. American Christianity is, is baloney. There's no such thing as, it's not going skiing by yourself. Christianity, being a, a believer of Jesus Christ, is a team sport. I'm a baseball player. What team are you on? I just go to whatever team is for that day. What? I'm a major league baseball player. No, you're not. You're not a legitimate MLB player until you're on the roster, everybody. Are you, listen, I'm not saying this to the only church. Join, it's not this church. Find a church that's about Bible believing. Get connected and start re making relationships. We're not interested in filling the seats. We're not interested in just having church. We thank you. We're glad you're here. But you know what? We're much more interested in you getting connected to God, getting connected to his word, and getting connected to each other, and getting connected with the Holy Spirit, and making a difference in the world. We don't need more people in the seats. But this is the place we start. Is that clear? Okay? Now, own your sin and cut it away. 
Live accountable and transparently. I'm telling you, you'll never be able to be free unless you do these things. And all these things, by the way, are not my ideas. They're just put, I'm taking scripture and summarizing in a sentence of steps that the Bible is quite clear about over and over and over again. This is not my idea. This is the word of God. Is that clear? So it's true. Okay? Own your sin and cut it away daily. And ask the worship team to make their way up, please. Live accountable and transparently. Be transformed. Metamorphosis. God can change you. You are a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. You don't have to live in the way you are. You're not damned by your design. Your designer is God. Be transformed in mind and heart by the word and the spirit. You need the word of God. I need the word of God. I have hidden your word in my heart. If I don't read his word, I can't hide his word. Why do I have this screen up here? Why do I have so much scripture? Because my opinions, you don't need someone else to give you their opinions. You don't need some clever story to make you laugh. Although we like to have fun here. We're all about the word. This is what I'm about. You, the last thing you need is more opinions. You need the word, and I need the word. I have hidden your word in my heart. In other words, it's, it's, it, the connotation is I've treasured your word that I might not sin against you. You see, when you get God's word in your heart, it affects your behavior. I don't have time to say, how do I get free? Well, first of all, you have to understand these things. I beseech you there, brethren. No, I beg you. That's what he's saying. I beg you. Therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, mercies of God. In other words, God's going to give you what you need. Hello. God doesn't give you, he didn't send you to Ikea without instructions. You ever go to Ikea? Try to put something together without instructions? He gives you a paraclete to help you along. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by these mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Every day, you and I need to walk the green mile. You and I are on death row. Every day, I have to say, I must die today. If I'm not dying, I'm a, I'm a living dead. I become a zombie Christian. There's a lot of zombie Christians out there that are terrorizing the world. That's why the world's afraid of the church. We're zombies. You got to die to live. Every day, there should be a death sentence. Every day, as Oddward Chamber says, there should be a white funeral. I, beside you, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable act of service. And do not be conformed, shaped by the world. Hello. But be transformed, metamorphosis. By the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? By the word. That you may prove what is, that is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So how do we get free? Own your sin and cut it away daily. Live accountable and transparently. Please, you're a homework assignment today. You need to get connected to somebody in the body of Christ that will hold you accountable. I have no friends. Well, that's okay. You make friends. You, you become a friend. You need to get connected. Get involved somehow. Look at some of our small groups and just go to one of them. It's awkward. Yeah, it's awkward. It's a lot more awkward to be by yourself and sin. Get accountable. Be transformed. And by the way, maybe you need to find a brother or sister you can tell. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. 70% of men are looking at pornography once a week. So at least 70% of us in this room are looking at porn. Hello? So are we going to just play games or are we going to be real? Deal with it. Tell somebody. Okay, just give me an example. Okay? So live accountable and transparently. Don't tell everybody. Find someone that you can trust, by the way, okay? That's very important. You don't just tell everyone because people... Be careful who you tell, but find someone that's godly, that walks according to the scripture, and be transformed in mind and heart by the word and the spirit. So when I see something I shouldn't see, you know what I go if I go to the beach or the mall, whoop, 
I bounce my eyes. Anyone I say, Holy Spirit. <laughs> I just, I, I, my friend taught me that. And it really works. I go, oh, Holy Spirit. So if you see me in the mall going, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, <laughs> pray for me and deliver me from the mall, okay? <laughs> Be transformed in the mind and heart by the word and the spirit. I ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes just for a moment. Guys, we need to stop making excuses. You're not a victim. You are a victor. If you're in Christ, if you're not in Christ Jesus, you are a victim. And right now is a time to get right before God. But before we do that, I want to give some of all of us here an opportunity. How many of you would say right now, I live a life all by myself. I'm not accountable to anybody. But today, with the Lord's help, I want to become accountable. Come in, just show of hands. You want to be accountable. Let's be real. No one wants to be accountable in this place. Really? Come on. Guys, look up here for a second. What are we doing here? Seriously. Why bother to come to church? Why bother? You can't be real. I got better things to do. How about you? This is not a theater. I'm taking a risk. I'm not being very, but I don't know about you. Are, are you tired of fake Christianity? I am. I got better things to do than to fake it. Are we going to be real or are we going to be fake? Seriously. Listen, I'm saying it because I care about you. I'm not better than you. The only way we're going to get healed is we have to start getting real. I'm going to ask you, how many of you right now are not accountable to anybody, but you need to be. I'll raise my hand more. I got, come on, let's be real. Come on, let's be real. God has freedom for us, everybody. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, you did not come to give us a better American life. You came to save us from hell. And Father, you've given us each other that we are our brother's keeper and that we are better together than we are by ourselves. Lord Jesus, I pray that everyone here, Lord, this week, they would find somebody to be accountable for whatever they're struggling with. If it's pornography, if it's anger, if it's substance abuse, if it's laziness, if it's dishonesty, whatever it is, Lord, whatever the vice is, that no longer will we live secretly with our sin, but we will confess our sin to one another and pray for one another that we would be healed. Father, we're not interested in being a spectator church. Father, we really want to see our lives change. And I start with me, Lord God. With every head bowed and every eye closed, let me ask you a question. Have you given your life to Jesus? Have you? If you were to die right now, do you absolutely know you'd be going to heaven? That you go to heaven? Jesus died for you and me. You're not good enough. I'm not good enough. But Christ is good enough. And so, if you've never given your life to Christ, today is a day of salvation. Maybe you still walk with God. You're not walking with God anymore. Just so I know better how to pray. Can you guys just, I want to give my life for the first time or renew my commitment. Can I just see a quick show of hands? Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let's pray this. Can we pray this prayer together? Lord Jesus, come on. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you rose again from the dead. I ask you to forgive me of everything I've ever done in Jesus' name. Today, I step down from being in charge of my life. I declare that my life is yours in Jesus' name. Thank you that I am now your child and I am born again. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, there's a card in the front pocket of your seat, or you can go online. Uh, you can take your cell phone. I've been criticizing the whole service. And you can text <laughs> uh, BELIEVE to 860-499-4888. Okay? And we want to help you with the next steps. Listen, listen, guys, I know I was speaking kind of tough with you today. I'm saying because I care about you. I'm saying because God cares about you. I'm not an angry preacher. I'm a preacher 
that realizes that without God, I'm a mess, and so are you. I'm a preacher that's tired of seeing fake Christianity. We're always going to be fake people out there. I'm fake sometimes. But let's walk together and be real. Amen? So that's what we're going to do. We want to help you with the next steps. You can do that. Uh, finally, as before we leave here today, we give you an opportunity to give. There are four different ways you can give. You can text to give. You see up there? Uh, I think they have a little slide up there. You can take your phone, take a picture of it, it makes it easier for you. Uh, you download the PushPay app. You can click Give Cornerstone Church. There are boxes in the back. Father, I pray you bless this offering today in Jesus' name. I pray you multiply it and use it. And Father, we thank you for the great things you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't worry, next week we're not going to yell at anybody, okay? But today was a kind of family meeting, all right? You guys good? I love you, but God loves you a whole lot more. Let's all stand for the benediction. May the Lord Jesus Christ fill you with his grace, his peace, and his love. May you go in the power of the Holy Spirit and the assurance of the Father of being his children. Go in his name, and let's be the body in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.